Autonomous cars and autonomous driving are all the rage. Recently, an electric autonomous semi-truck drove itself all the way across the country in three days. So the promise of autonomous driving is very, very interesting, and it is becoming slowly a reality, depending on how you define it. But in some ways, we might be further behind than we were a long, long time ago. So let's take a look at that. So most of you are probably thinking, hey, autonomous driving is better now than it's ever been. Or maybe when he says that we're further back, he's talking about the fact that there's been some accidents and some, some political setbacks. Some might say that there's been some technical setbacks. I don't think there's really been technical setbacks. There's just been recognition of technical challenges that we thought weren't there or pretended weren't there. So I'm not talking about that. There are a lot of technical challenges. And if you watch some of my recent videos about autonomous driving and AI, you know that there are some pretty serious issues still. Uh, when we talk about autonomous driving, if we merely keep it to a specific area, it gets easier. For example, if we just do it on the freeway and stay in the same lane, it's the most simple problem. If we want to change lanes with assistance, it's a little more complex. If we want the car to change lanes on its own, it's even more complex. If we want the car to route itself and go through an interchange, it's even more complex. When we get off the freeway and we're navigating stop signs and stop lights, it's even more complex. When we get other cars doing crazy things in the mix, it's even more. When we get humans and bicycles, pedestrians crossing, motorcycles splitting the lane, it's even more complex. So there are lots of areas where we're pretty good at it right now. And there are lots of areas where we're pretty bad at it right now. And there's a lot of things that can fool the system right now. Uh, I mentioned in one of my AI videos how a dark circular area on the highway can confuse, that was my car kicking in the braking system because someone cut in front of me too close, even though they had plenty of space. Anyway, there, if there's a like a dark circular patch on the road in front of me, then this car has a tendency to think that it's some kind of a pothole and it'll generally give a pretty sharp tug on the wheel to try to move around it if I have the lane keeping assist on. So I can see that, you know, the recognition of the lane boundaries aren't bad. They're not great. The lanes around here aren't painted very well. But this, you know, swerve around a pothole because I'm doing 65 is often quite dangerous and often doesn't take into account the cars that are next to me. And it would have to be a pretty horrific pothole to be more dangerous than intentionally slamming in the car next to me. So there's a lot of little problems like that. It turns out we encounter lots of intelligence required issues while we're driving. And we talk about artificial intelligence in the scope of autonomous driving all the time. And I, I've used the term, I've been using the term, I talk about the term, but in a general sense, artificial intelligence, like what we read about in Asimov books, robots, androids, movies. That's not what we're talking about in these cars. This is not general purpose intelligence. These are sensor driven systems that have been given some guidance and parameters and they use things like machine learning and they try to recognize what's the traffic, what's around me, what's the condition and what are the chances and the options that I have to move forward. So it's not really I know machine learning is a form of AI, but it just means that the part of the AI definition that says the machine can learn, right? It's not general purpose. It's not really autonomous in the sense that it, it can only be autonomous within a very narrow set of boundaries. So why do I say that we've gone backward? Well, you know, the funny thing is that we've had autonomous air flight for quite a long time. And air is actually a much easier problem in general. We don't have lines. We don't have 
people crossing in front of us. We don't have lane changes. Uh, we don't have potholes. So pointing in the right direction, maintaining an altitude is relatively simple. And given that air traffic control gives us very specific guidance, if you do that electronically, then the system can interpret it and off it can go. And airports now have all this really cool electronic stuff that guides planes in for landing. So we know exactly, you know, the altitude, the, the wind coming through the system, the how far to the left the runway is, how far to the right the runway is, where the middle of the runway is. And it's, it's a relatively simplistic system, partly because it's easier to fly in a simple level. There are some conditions that are harder to fly, like a jet aircraft or a helicopter doing uh, nap of the earth kind of flights, right? Staying 100 feet off the ground, avoiding trees, hills, uh, cars, trucks, buildings, whatever. But for general aviation, the problem is relatively simple and the infrastructure is there to give clues to the vehicles. This highway that I'm on doesn't have any clues. The system has no idea where the lane actually is. It's using visual recognition to try to determine where the lane is. But if there was a embedded radio signal in the lane, it would be really, really easy to follow. So that's one of the kinds of problems. But why have we gone backwards? So there's a funny story in, in Heinlein's book, Stranger in a Strange Land. No, not Stranger in a Strange Land. Wrong book. Good book, but wrong book. Time Enough for Love. Big, long book. Um, breaks a lot of taboos, so you may or may not enjoy it. Not for kids. Don't let the kids read it. It's not pornography, but it is an adult book. But Time Enough for Love, he ends up, spoiler alert, like always, if I'm going to use a story, you know, go read it. It's a huge book. It's, it's kind of interesting, kind of cool. But basically, in the book, he ends up time traveling. And he goes back to the early 20th century. I don't know, 1920, 1930, something like that. Uh, actually, earlier than that. It's before World War I. And when he gets there, he's going around a rural area, so people aren't using motor vehicles. There are still a lot of people using horses, and people are just becoming accustomed to this idea of these horseless carriages. And it's interesting because he has a conversation with a, a doctor who's complaining that the horseless carriage is really a pain. He actually ends up giving the doctor a ride home. And the doctor complains that when he's had a really long day and he's tired, that driving home is pretty dangerous. Whereas when he was using the horse, he could just point it in the right way and the horse would take him home. So generally speaking, a horse isn't fully autonomous driving. It wouldn't be level five in that we could simply give it a route. There are some routes that it knows that it'll go on, but it is, I've tried to decide, is it level two, is it level three, is it level four? It's a funny discussion for another day. I might dive into it, but a well-trained horse, a well-behaved horse certainly knows where the lanes are. It's not going to you know, smash into the side of the road. It might have problems with things like potholes, the same way that a car would. Um, it might not mind, in other words, small obstacles that don't bother its horse feet, but would be bad for the vehicle being dragged behind it, the carriage, the cart, whatever it is. So a rider on a horse has a pretty high level of road recognition in a very safe manner. A person in a cart behind a horse has a lower level because the horse's actual intelligence, not artificial intelligence, animal intelligence, see another form of AI, the horse's animal intelligence doesn't encompass anything about the vehicle behind them really. It just encompasses their own feet. But they can get you somewhere. You could be drunk, you could be asleep, and if it's a route that they know and expect to take, they'll just take you there. If you take a snooze while driving, they won't bump into a tree or another horse. If you close your eyes for a few seconds or if you don't pay attention, you're okay. So it's kind of funny. Uh, when I first read the book, I was like, wow, I never really thought of it that way. That when we went from horse-drawn 
carriages or even better, just riding horseback to having these, you know, horseless carriages. When we took the animal intelligence out of the equation, we ended up with something that's really, really dumb. I mean, cars are dumb. Cars don't know anything. Right? Modern cars, cars start to know some things, but in general, cars didn't know anything. And for a century, they didn't know anything. So it's kind of funny that we are headed toward regaining some of the capability that drivers, teamsters, people being transported from point A to point B had 100 years ago. It's a funny thing to think about. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe for more content. If there's anything else you want to hear about, please let me know. Thanks.